One of the goals for my YouTube channel is to make things that get people excited about engineering. And what better way to do that than by building the most lovable robot there is on the planet? I mean, just look at that face. When my dog looks at me like that, I don't care what stupid thing he's just done. I just want to pet him anyway. I wish I could say this was my idea, but it actually came from my daughter. If you've been following this channel for any length of time, you know my kids love to peek in on my projects. And so I also often talk to them about what's coming up next. So me and my daughter are riding along in the car and I'm explaining to her how I'm having trouble figuring out what to make next. And then just sort of haphazardly, I said, you know what will be an amazing robot? That would be Eve from the movie Wally. I said, she's just, she would be so hard to make. She's this ultra sleek VTOL. You know, she can take off vertically. She's got this magnetic levitating head and everything is wrapped up in this gorgeous egg shaped package. And my daughter looked at me and she just said, dad, why don't you build Wally? Of course, Jeremy. Why don't you build Wally? <laughs> so let's build Wally. So then, how do we go about making Wally? Well, just like all of my engineering projects, I like to start by defining my problems and my constraints right at the beginning so that I know what I'm working with. Probably the biggest and most important constraint is his actual shape. It's super critical that he actually looks like Wally. If he doesn't look like Wally in the movie, I've failed. This is very unusual for engineering because normally we would start with function and work our way towards form. In fact, I even helped write a textbook where we made exactly this argument. You start with function, that is what it can do. I'm doing exactly the opposite. I'm starting with the form, it's got to look like Wally, and then working my way backwards trying to squeeze all the function into this package. That's really hard. Therefore, one of the first things I had to figure out is what is Wally's scale? How big is he actually? Figuring out Wally's scale was actually pretty easy. He picks up many everyday objects throughout the movie and most of those objects come in a pretty standard size. And for the things that don't come in a standard size, I had to use my better judgment. There was one hurdle I had to jump over though. When I wanted to take screenshots in order to resize the pictures and actually get Wally's scale, I couldn't do it. It only cost $3 to buy this used copy on eBay. So now I actually own a copy of the DVD and I can record my screen. Another benefit of having the DVD over the Disney Plus membership is you can get all the bonus footage. And within the bonus footage, there are clips of Wally rolling around with a white background. And that made it even easier to see his uh, geometry really good and get some good shots of what he looks like up close. Aside from reviewing the movie many, many times, I also dug around on the internet trying to see what other information I could glean. And I stumbled upon a post where someone said that there is a Wally teaser video inside the video game Ratatouille. I know, right? That's quite the string to start pulling on, but I tugged on it anyway. And man, let me tell you, I hit the jackpot. The teaser video is actually like an infomercial for Wally as a machine being sold by B. Introducing the all new Wall E from By and Large. As the newest fleet of Wall E units work in the harshest landscapes to clear even the toughest debris. It gives me all sorts of stats for Wally's capabilities, including his trash compactor volume. With a storage capacity of 2,744 cubic inches and top speed of 30 miles per hour, Wall E can output one cube of waste every 10 seconds. That's 14 cubic inches, by the way. So now I've got a dimension to anchor all of my other dimensions and we were able to nail Wally's general uh, shape. Not only is he smaller than I initially thought, he's also surprisingly complicated. For example, we see over and over again, probably a defining characteristic of Wally, and that is him collapsing into a box when he's afraid, right? Which I'm gonna call turtle mode going forward here. So when he goes into turtle mode, he pulls his head, his arms, and his tracks, and everything collapse into his original box shape. Not only can his tracks change shape, but they're mounted on rods that are telescoping. His arms also telescope in and out. They can pivot up and down and they can slide along this U-shaped rail. <laughs> His arms have a lot of degrees of freedom. Now, none of these individual features are impossible by themselves. I mean, I just built a robot arm where I attached a plasma cutter to the end of it. Surely I could attach a plasma cutter to Wally. The real problem is the space available to put all this stuff in. Let's not forget, he's also a trash compactor, which means a lot of his internal volume is supposed to be empty. Even if I somehow made his trash compactor space 
collapsible when he brought his tracks in and his arms and his head in. <laughs> he's still a robot. He's got to have motors, gears, pulleys, electronics. He needs all of these things just to function. So I decided I need to make something that will help me wrap my mind around the actual available space that we have to work with. And two weeks later, this had turned into an entire project. Now, when I first opened Non Shape, I thought I was just gonna be 3D modeling a box. And I did eventually make a box, but I very quickly started to feel like, you know, I really should go ahead and make it look like Wally. Now, for months, I've been thinking about giving On Shape a try. And so I decided, what better opportunity than to jump in now? So far, so good. Once I had something I could 3D print, I jumped over into Bamboo Studio, and then I was printing for days and days. <laughs> Initially, I thought I was gonna print all this on the A1 printer. This printer was sent to me by Bamboo Labs about a year ago. No strings attached. I didn't promise them a video or anything. I just told them I would try it. Well, a whole year later, I'm enjoying the printer so much, I sent them an email back and I said, I love it, I'm gonna actually use it in a video. I have a multi-material print idea. I'm gonna use TPU and uh, PETG. They replied, well, we think the H2D would be a better choice if you wanna print with different materials. Can we send you the H2D instead? And I said, of course you can send me H2D. So now I have the H2D and the A1 printer all burning filament 24 hours a day. Now that all the pieces are printed out, of course I had to break off the supports. Then it's just a matter of gluing all the pieces together and spray painting it. Now I know what some of you are thinking, Jeremy, you have multicolor printers. Why are you spray painting it when you could just print it out in the color that you want? And that's a fantastic question. The issue is time. When you print with multiple colors, two additional things are happening. Every time you switch colors, you switch tool heads, you purge a little bit of plastic, and each one of those steps takes time, as well as wasting a little bit of plastic. If you multiply that by thousands of layers across multiple days, it adds a lot of time to the print. So it was way faster to just print with whatever color was in the printer and then spray paint it in the end. Of course, if you're not under a time crunch, it's way more convenient to just print in multicolor. It pops off of the plate and it looks exactly the way you want. There's no additional work required. Speaking of multicolor, that feature is not all that useful to me personally because I mostly make functional parts and so I don't usually care what the part looks like. For me, the benefit of AMS is you can run the printer spool all the way until it's completely empty and it will automatically switch to the next spool. There's no more waiting around for the spool to run out or being forced to make a decision to take it off while you're standing in front of the printer so you don't have to come back and babysit this thing later. Along the same lines, you can also have different materials already loaded in the machine and ready to go at any time. There's, there's no more thinking, oh man, I got PLA in the printer and I wanna print with PETG, so I gotta unload the PLA. It's already loaded, just hit print. There's one more thing worth mentioning here that I didn't even consider before I got this printer, and that is multi-material printing not multicolor. For example, in the next video, we're gonna be talking about Wally's tracks and some custom rollers that I'm designing. This roller has a, a pet G with carbon fiber inner core to make it more rigid. And on the outside, it's TPU, which is uh, more rubbery. Because they print at different temperatures and have different consistencies, you're gonna have issues with it clogging up in the nozzle. It's much more efficient to use two different nozzles. TPU is especially temperamental, and the more flexible it is, the more difficult it is to print. Bamboo Labs actually has a dedicated page to printing TPU. I followed all of those and I had no problems at all, but it's a little bit of a hassle. I mean, you can see that the filament is uh, being fed through the top. TPU absorbs moisture very readily, so I needed to put it into an enclosure, and there are just a lot of things to consider. All of it's listed on that page, but if you skip any of those steps, you're probably gonna have problems. So it's worth taking the time to make sure that you follow the steps. Like I said earlier, I've been using this printer for over a year now and it's been super reliable and very easy to use. So if that's the kind of printer you're looking for, I strongly recommend you check out Bamboo Labs. There's a link in the description. Okay, let's take a look at the full scale Wally and see what we can learn. All right, ladies and gentlemen, this is Wally at scale. And I've made him so that he can open up. Hopefully he can open up. Oh, that's tight, okay. There we go. Well, let's just pull that arm off. Okay, that uh, wasn't nearly as graceful as I'd hoped, but uh, 
Now you get the idea. This is the volume we have to work with for Wally. And this is Wally's track at full scale. The tracks that you see on my model here have been scaled down to fit in the space. Maybe you can start to see the problem that we have here, but it gets better. He's a robot. He's got motors, he's got gears inside. These are just representative samples here. Batteries, he's got a nice folding solar panel here. Shafts. Pulleys, this is not everything. We've got quite a challenge ahead of us. But if I just make him fatter, he doesn't look like Wally. And this is the thing that I really want you to wrap your mind around. This stuff won't just be shoved in there. It's got to be organized, belts and pulleys and that kind of stuff needs space. And so this is by far gonna be the most demanding aspect of this whole project, is how do I get everything I need inside of the space that I have available. That means I've got to make some hard choices. I'm certainly going to have to fudge a few dimensions. I'm probably going to have to skip a few features. And there's another issue. We're building something similar in complexity and material to an industrial robot. And these things are inherently dangerous. That means we're going to have to find a careful balance between his capacity versus safety. For example, according to the teaser video, Wallet can travel 30 miles an hour but that doesn't mean my wallet needs to go 30 miles an hour. Also, considering the fact that he's gonna have sliding tracks, pinch points, doors that open and close, arms that move and extend and retract, we just need to be uh, very thoughtful in the way that we design it so that he can be safe around kids. So I've been racking my brain trying to decide what features can I eliminate, what things will people care about and not care about, and still feel like they're watching Wally. And then I decided, I got it. I need to call in some Wally experts. If the experts tell me the feature should be there, then it probably should be there. Let's do it. Wow. <laughs> he's bigger than I expected. Say it again? He's bigger than I expected. Really? I thought he was kind of small. He looks about the right size for the movie. Uh, well, do I, did I get the look right? Yes. Yes. Except not rusty. Not re- oh, okay, we will add the rest. That's a good question. I'm probably going to hire somebody to do that for me because I don't think I can do a good job. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but I'm going to hire someone. Wait, you weren't supposed to agree with me. What was that? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> no. but-, but does he need to be rusty? Why can't he be a new Wally? I would love for him to be a new Wally. Okay, so grab a chair. This is what I want to talk about. What do I need to do to make him like the real, what makes him feel like Wally? Does mm-hmm. his eyes move or will they move at some point? Yeah, yeah. his eyes can move. Makes him more yeah. emotional, yeah. Okay, what about the little eye flapper things like you see on the side? Oh yeah. Do we need that as well? Maybe I forgot those were there. But, ah, yeah. <laughs> okay, this is good. When you think about Wally, what do you picture him doing? I'm picturing like, Switch it down to the square and eyes moving. Will he make noises? What kind of noises should he make? I don't know, Wally noises. <laughs> <laughs> you only okay. said he's one thing. Noise. Okay, he definitely says his name. Name. Wally. Wally. Okay, so he should be able to make noises. Yeah. And play music, because he, he also plays music. Remember, he's like, he rolls out, he's looking up at the stars, and then he pushes play, oh, yeah, yeah. and he plays right. that yeah. song. Yeah. Yeah. So that will be really good. He's, we have to capture his emotion. That's an important part, yeah. Do you think it's important that he can open up his trash compactor door? Does he need to be a trash compactor? Um, yes. Yeah, good, cool. Yeah? Yeah. yeah. Did you just say that because I suggested it, or are you? <laughs> <laughs> would you really be interested in seeing him be able to do that? I feel like it would be cool if the doors, the trash bin, the doors did open, but I don't think he needs it. So okay, so they could open and close, but very slowly. Yeah. And I could also make the the force low enough that if your fingers were in there, you know, it would stop. It wouldn't. It doesn't have to be. Yeah. So the trash compactor strength. It can just be. Chomp your fingers off. You know. Yeah. Yeah. All right, hold on. Well, since we're in here, I 
I don't think this has come out yet. I don't know. I'm just see. Don't break him. Yeah, I'm kind of scared to break him. So I made a little mini version of the same thing. So he's like my big reference model. I'll be using him throughout the series to help me remember how big he is and how much space I have to work with as I try to squeeze all the stuff in there. And yeah. those hands move? Yeah, yeah, they should probably be able to move. Just okay. Do that. All right. So he can hold his boot. <laughs> ah. yes. Where are you going to keep him? You know, one problem at a time. <laughs> <laughs> What are you going to do with the small one once that's an actual one go? Uh, I don't know. What should I do with it? Can I just throw it away? Is that no. okay? No. I, oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> okay. No. Okay. He looks too nice now. You got to keep him. I got to keep him. And yes. put him somewhere. I don't know where, but he's going to be somewhere. You don't need the mini fridge, do you? What? <laughs> you going to make me get rid of my mini fridge so I can keep Wally? I have one this person in my room. He could fit. Oh, <laughs> wow. <laughs> I'll just take it. Okay. I don't think I'm getting that back, am I? No. <laughs> okay. <laughs> all right. I gotta make my own. It's gonna steal all your wallies now. <laughs> I can't have them. He's mine. Oh my gosh. Any other thoughts? No, I think okay. that's everything. Very good. We got a plan. Okay. This interview with the kids taught me something extremely important. I was about to make a huge mistake. You see, I was so intensely focused on figuring out exactly what engineering problems needed to be solved, I was missing the obvious. This build should not be about creating a functional robot. It should be about creating a feeling. It's about teleporting you back into your favorite moment from the story. Did you see the way my daughter was holding this? Even if Wally has no functionality, he can be lovable. So here's what I'm gonna do. Rather than try to define all my constraints and design requirements, which is what I would normally do, I'm gonna start with this. I wanna build a machine such that when you see it, you are instantly teleported back into the story and you wanna walk up and give him a hug. That's my goal. Everything else will just be for show. But of course, I love a good engineering show. So we're gonna definitely incorporate many of his amazing functions into the robot build that we make. So here's the deal. If you like what you see and you wanna follow me along on this journey, then you should hit the subscribe button. Also, scroll down to the comments and tell me what kind of features you want to see in Wally, because I, I still need to figure out exactly what I want to do, and it would be nice to have your opinion as well. Okay, I need to go put this back before my daughter gets home from school. I'll see you in the next episode. <laughs>